Hello everyone! In today's presentation I will be talking about an incredibly useful mathematical tool. Before we get started, I'd like to quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video. Do you need some extra help with your homework, or just want to talk with somebody about a topic that makes you curious? Nerdy Tutors is an on-demand platform that connects you with the best tutor within minutes. It's mobile friendly and comes with a built-in messenger app making it easier to connect than ever before. The people working at Nerdy Tutors are experts in practically every subject, not just science, and they're always happy to help. They don't charge too much either. Follow the link in the description to find out more. Okay, back to the main presentation. It's time to introduce you to that mathematical tool I mentioned. It's called a vector, and it looks like this. Now, a vector may look like a simple arrow, but it's really more than that. What you see here is a representation of something physical. It could be a force, such as the force of a well-placed punch, or it could represent the flow of electricity through a wire. These things have a certain size and act in a certain direction. Both size and direction are important qualities, and we can use a vector to represent both of them easily on paper. Take this vector, for example. It has a certain length, which shows the size of the force delivered by that ferocious punch. You may have heard this referred to as magnitude, which is the more grown-up term. Since forces are measured in newtons, we can say in this case that the vector's magnitude is 1000 newtons. The direction in which the force is applied is shown by the direction the vector points. When you look at something like the force of a punch, the direction of the force is fairly obvious, toward the target. Other physical quantities are more difficult to visualize, such as the acceleration of a planet through space, or the way heat is transferred across a room, which makes vectors even more important. They can show us things that are invisible in reality. As you will see studying maths or physics, there are many times when you need to add vectors together, or subtract one vector from another. For the rest of this video, I will explain how to do that. First, we shall look at adding and subtracting vectors in one dimension, then in two dimensions. You can use these timecodes to skip ahead to the most relevant section for you. Let's begin by adding two vectors in one dimension, meaning in a straight line. A line is a one-dimensional construct, so anything moving along that line is said to be moving in one dimension. Consider the two vectors shown here. They have different magnitudes, indicated by one being shorter than the other, but they both point in the same direction. When it comes to labeling a vector, we normally use a letter with some extra sign, like a small arrow or an accent. This is the sign I personally prefer. It isn't mathematically important, it just tells us that we're dealing with a vector. Let's go ahead and call these vectors a dash and b dash. Now suppose we want to add them together. Doing so will create a third vector that is the sum of a dash and b dash. It looks like this. In order to add vectors together, you need to arrange them so that the tip of one vector meets the tail end of the other. Only the magnitude and direction of each vector are important, not their position. That means you can move them around the screen all you want, as long as you don't turn them or change their size. Thus, we can shift one vector so that its tip meets the tail of the other. The third, or resultant vector, points in the same direction as well. We draw it from the tail end of A dash over to the tip of B dash. Its magnitude, as you can see, is the magnitude of a dash plus the magnitude of b dash. If we label this vector c dash, we can write an equation saying that a dash plus b dash equals c dash, and we see visually that it is true. What if we need to subtract these two vectors instead? Suppose you're asked to take b dash away from a dash. What then? Subtracting vectors still creates a third vector known as the resultant vector. To explain how it's done, let's quickly look at some ordinary number subtraction. 
What do you get when you take 7 away from 10? You get 3. How about when you add negative 7 to 10, like this? You get the same answer, right? That's because adding a negative number is the same as subtracting a positive number, assuming they are the same distance from 0. While this may seem arbitrary at first, it's actually the exact formula we need to subtract two vectors correctly. What we need to do is add the negative of b dash to a dash. The final question is, what is the negative of a vector? Well, it's the same vector turned by 180 degrees. Any vector can be transformed into its negative by flipping it around, reversing the direction, drawing its opposite. Now that we have negative b dash, we can add it to a dash in order to find the correct resultant vector. Any time we add two vectors, we need to make sure the tip of one vector meets the tail of the other. Next, we draw a new vector from the tail end of a dash to the tip of negative b dash. This is the resultant vector that comes from subtracting b dash from a dash. Please note that the order of subtraction is important here, just as it is with ordinary numbers. If b dash is the one being subtracted, you can't flip a dash around because that's not the vector we want the negative for. It would give us an incorrect answer. Feel free to skip ahead to the practice problems at the end of this video, or stick around to see vector manipulation in two dimensions. On a two-dimensional surface, such as your screen, things can move up, down, left, right, or anywhere in between. They are no longer confined to straight lines. Vectors can also exist in two dimensions, and adding them together is a little more complicated. Here's how to do it. Consider these two vectors, e dash and f dash. As you can see, they have different magnitudes and point in different directions. e dash is pointing straight up, whereas f dash points to the right. They might represent two forces acting on the same object, in which case the total force can be found by adding them together. For a given vector, only the magnitude and direction are important, not the position. That means you can shift a vector around as much as you want, provided you don't rotate it or change its size. The first step in adding vectors is to shift them around so that the tip of one meets the tail end of the other. It's always tip to tail. Next, we need to draw a third or resultant vector. This is done by drawing an arrow starting from the exposed tail end of E dash up to the exposed tip of F dash. Using a ruler for this is highly recommended. Finally, let's label that resultant vector G dash. It's the sum of E dash and F dash, with a magnitude that is greater than either of them and a direction that is in between theirs. Suppose we return to these two vectors and somebody asks us to subtract f dash from e dash. What then? Subtracting vectors still creates a third vector, known as the resultant vector. To explain how it's done, we first need to review the subtraction of ordinary numbers. What do you get when you take 4 away from 5? You get 1. How about when you add negative 4 to 5, like this? you get the same answer. That's because adding a negative number is the same as subtracting a positive number, assuming they are the same distance from zero. While this may seem arbitrary, it's actually the exact formula we need to subtract two vectors correctly. What we need to do is add the negative of f dash to e dash. The final question is, what is the negative of a vector? It's the same vector, but rotated 180 degrees. Any vector can be transformed into its own negative by flipping it around. Thus, flipping the vector f dash gives us negative f dash. Now we just add this to e dash using the tip to tail method. The resultant vector this provides will be the answer to our subtraction problem. The first step in adding two vectors is to place the tip of one against the tail end of the other. As long as you don't rotate them, you can move vectors around all you want on the screen. 
Next, we need to draw the resultant vector by drawing an arrow starting from the exposed tail end of E dash to the exposed tip of negative F dash. I suggest using a ruler for this if you're doing it on paper. And now we have successfully subtracted F dash from E dash. These are the principles of vector addition and subtraction. As with all new skills, the best thing for you to do now is practice. That's why the rest of this video will be dedicated to a selection of addition and subtraction problems. I won't do any more talking, I will just show you each problem in turn, going from easier ones to harder ones. Pause the video when each new problem pops up, then try to draw the resultant vector on paper, or on your screen, or picture it in your head. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments below, and good luck.